Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a coping saw vise. Well, a while back on the show, I demonstrated to you guys how to make a fret saw table, and it's something that holds in place with your bench vise to give you the ability to use a coping saw or a fret saw to be able to do kind of scroll work using that table. And I had a viewer contact me and ask me, is it possible, because they had seen some of these, that mount vertically, and that would be a fret saw vise, and that's what we're going to do today. Now it all starts off with a little bit of three quarter inch thick plywood and some layout over at the bench. So what I've done with our three quarter inch plywood is I've cut a piece to be 12 inches wide and 16 inches long. And this is the main upright component for our fretwork vise. So the very first thing we want to do is just a couple marks on here. The first one will be in from each edge at an inch and a quarter in, we're going to place a line. Now don't worry too much about this line because it's actually going to be routed away. Um, because what we need here is, for in my case, I'm going to use a 5 16 upcut spiral bit and we're going to route this out all the way through to give us a clean slot. Now that slot is going to start at one and a quarter inches down from the top, right there, and the slot itself is going to be six and a quarter inches long. So we will place a mark at seven and a half because our initial inch and a quarter plus our six and a quarter will give us seven and a half inches. So we'll just come down here, seven and a half inches, and that is where our slot is going to end. So let's head over to the router table. Well, I have a 5 16 upcut spiral bit installed in the router table, and I have it raised up at about a quarter of an inch. It's just a rough measurement. You don't want to take this all in one pass to cut these grooves, guys. Now, truth be told, I already did one pass and I was filming it, but I lost the footage. So I'm going to go through the explanation that I've already done that I lost the footage of. So what I have here is I have set my fence on the router table so that the center of my bit is going to strike at that inch and a quarter mark here. And I have my stop set up, one at this end and one at this end. This will be my start point. This will be my end point. And we're just going to place our board tight up against the um, stop at this end, lower it down onto a rotating bit, follow through with the cut, and when it gets to the other end, we will lift it off. Now I've already done one pass, as I said, but lost the footage, and we can see that here. So I'm going to raise the bit up another quarter of an inch, and uh, we'll do this other pass, a second pass, and hopefully I won't lose the footage this time, and you can get the idea of what it is that we're trying to accomplish here. And there we have our second pass. Now guys, because our slots are symmetrical, because they're the same distance from the sides and the same distance from the top, there's no need to readjust our setup. We just cut them from opposite sides. And because they're through slots, it really doesn't matter uh, what side you're routing on because they're eventually both going to be right through. So I'm going to raise this up for the last little bit here of the cut. That should do it right about there. And uh, we will finish off the slots. Now guys, whether you want to use a push block here or not is 100% up to you. Um, there's plenty of space back here on a 12 inch board that you can run this through without a push block. However, it's always good to be a little extra safety conscious and, and why not? You know what, accidents happen, right? And there we have our slots, perfectly symmetrical, perfectly in the right spot. That upcut spiral bit does a fantastic job, especially on something like plywood. So the next thing we're going to do is from the top, and this is our top, we're going to place a line roughly here in the center at seven inches down. And as well, we're going to place a line, a center line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a one inch circle template 
And right in the middle here where those lines intersect, I'm going to place a one inch diameter circle. Now we're going to come in here from each side at two and a half inches. Just going to place a little mark there at the top, just like that. Two and a half inches in. And from that mark, I'm going to use my bevel. You don't have to use a bevel if you don't want. That's up to you. But we're going to align it from that mark at two and a half inches down to the edge of our one inch diameter hole. And we're going to draw a line there from, from those two points. Now this one should be the same. So from our mark at two and a half inches, we should be able to line up our bevel and just run the line down. And there we go. There is our V notch that will get cut out. Now you have several options to cut this out. You can use a bandsaw. You can use a fret saw, which is what this table is meant to be used with. You can use a scroll saw. You can cut it by hand. You can drill this um, one inch hole with a Forstner bit and then use a handsaw to come down and meet to the lines. Whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I'm going to use the scroll saw. But before I do, I want to place in each corner here, we're going to round off each one of these corners to make it a little more user friendly. Uh, I'm not a fan of sharp corners on things that I use with hand tools. So I'm just going to use an inch and a quarter circle template and I'm going to round off each one of these corners. And then I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw. We're gonna cut those corners off and we're gonna cut out this V notch. And there you go. This now is essentially our upright working platform finished. Um, truth be told guys, on these outer radius here, uh, what I did was cut almost up to the line and then using my um, belt sander I took it down to its final dimension to get a much smoother curve um, much happier with that it's kind of a better method to go about it especially if you're not 100% confident in your ability to cut those curves so guys we can give this a good sanding and then put it aside and now it's time to turn our attention to our clamp piece so in order to make our hold down, we need another piece of three quarter inch thick plywood. It is the same length as the width of our original piece, 12 inches, and it is three inches wide. So a little bit of layout here. Uh, for starters, we need to mark our holes. And if you recall, we had our original holes at one and a quarter inches in from either side of our board. So that is exactly what we're going to do here. One and a quarter inches in and centered on our piece. Just like that from both sides we're going to center punch this and drill a 5 16 diameter hole. As well on each one of our corners we are going to place a uh, using an inch and a quarter circle template we are going to place a round over on each one of those corners there and uh, soften these sharp edges the same way that we did on our upright. We'll just cut it close to the line and then sand it over at the belt sander. I'll see you when we get that done. So there we go. There's our holes drilled. Um, we can put this piece aside and now we need to make the base for our project. So our base, much like our hold down, is three quarters of an inch thick and it is 12 inches long. And it is, in this case, for me, it's six inches wide. If you want to make it wider, you can. If you want to make it a little more narrow, you can as well. That is not imperative. So the first thing that I want to do here is I have placed an inch and a quarter circle template here and round it off the corners and just like I have done with each of the other pieces I'm going to cut this off and sand it at the belt sander. Well the next thing that we're going to need is a dado in the center of this here. This is our base. Our upright will get placed in a dado. It should be a tight dado. Um, so what I've done is I've drawn out where I need it here. 
basing it on the center line that I've drawn on this same board. So let's head over to the table saw and I'll show you how we're going to cut this. And this method will work if you don't have a dado blade, because I know some of you don't. Well, I want this dado to be half the depth into our board. So I've set the height of my blade at the table saw to be 3 8 of an inch. I've also transferred the marks from our dado onto the end of our board. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my fence over and we're just going to roughly, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to roughly set it for the center of our board. Now what we're going to do, guys, turn on your saw, run it through for one pass, rotate the board 180 degrees, and run it through for a second pass. That will provide you with a centered, kind of a mini dado right in the middle of your board. And at this point, guys, what we're going to do is release our fence. You want to move it out about half the blade's width, right about there. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to run it through for a pass, turn it 180 degrees, and then run it through for another pass. We will continue to do that until we are getting close to our lines. And once we start getting close to our lines, we're going to use our original board and test in our dado to make sure that we get the tightest and the best fit possible. So just continue to make those cuts until you get your dado finished. Well, at this point, we're going to apply a little bit of glue in our dado here, just like that. And we will carefully place our upright board in there. And we can tap it in place. Now guys, while this is like this, what we can do is we're going to flip it upside down, place it in our vise, and mark a center line. We're gonna use some number eight by two inch screws, drill pilot holes into our three quarter ply, and just place a couple, probably three, one in the center, one at each edge, countersunk screws to pull this whole thing together. And once you get your third screw in, chances are you've got a bit of squeeze out coming out of your, here of your uh, joint. So just wipe your squeeze out off of there, clean it up, and uh, put this aside and let it dry. At this point, guys, uh, while we're waiting for this, we can turn our attention to the mechanism or the bolts or the threaded rod that is going to hold our retainer here or our hold down onto our vise. Well, guys, if you have bolts that are long enough, feel free to use quarter 20 bolts. For me, um, I actually prefer to use threaded rod. The reason for that is that I can get a custom bolt for a jig like this uh, at any length that I want. Now, some guys have problems with threaded rod. When they cut it, they have problems with the shaping. Guys, in the electrical trade, I have used miles of threaded rod over the years. And the easiest way that I found uh, is after you cut it, Take it to your belt sander and with a gentle touch, just grind down the edge of your threaded rod to about a 45 degree angle. Uh, make sure you got a face shield on guys and the nut just goes on no problem. So for these guys, what I've done is I've actually peened one edge here. Uh, I put the nut on and then kind of you know, threaded it down just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and then clamped this nut in the vise and pounded on the top of it with a hammer just to peen over the edge. That way, the nut cannot come off. The nut stays there. Now, let me show you how it is that we're going to mount this. So we have our assembly. We have our shop-made bolts. We're just going to place a quarter-inch washer on the one side with the nut and place one of them here, just like this, into our slots. From there, guys, our retainer board uh, of our vise, that will slide on to our quarter inch bolts. 
we'll slide another washer on top of that. And in this case, I mean, you can make a, a shop made jig knob if you want. I've shown you guys how to do that before. But in this case, I'm actually using a couple of the ones that I 3D printed. So we're just going to slide that on there. There we go. And there we go. There's our second one. And guys, this is our jig complete. So how do we use this jig? Well, for starters, you really need to clamp this to your bench and clamp it firmly. So I've just taken this piece, a half inch ply. I've done this goofy little design. And all you want to do is place your retainer board here in such a way so that it's going to uh, give the most support and the most pressure on the piece that you want to hold in place. So we're just going to place this here like that. And we'll tighten this one down. Okay, and that piece now is held securely in place. Once you have it securely held, you don't just want to start cutting like crazy. You still need to support the board here as best you can. You want to uh, make sure because it is a long board. You gotta remember this thing is 16 inches long. So you want to give it some support. You shouldn't need to give it much though. And basically with this thing upright, you can cut your design. There you have it. A coping saw or a fret saw vise, uh, in this case, for the vertical. Guys, this is a spectacular project and it's a great little jig if you like doing a little bit of handwork, a little bit of fret work, um, and you like using hand saws for that. It really does a great job at holding your pieces in place so that you can get the curves that you need. Now, sometimes, the handle or the arch of your fret saw can get in the way. It can hit that jig and prevent you from getting the curve that you want. Don't forget that fret saws have the ability to rotate their blades. Some only have a 45 and a 90 degree setting, but you don't have to keep it in the straight on 90 degree uh, profile. You can rotate that blade and be able to get the extra room that you need to finish off your cuts. So don't feel uh, that, you know, what your jig is getting in the way. Yeah, it is, but you can adjust your saw to work around that. Now guys, I gave you my method for cleaning up threaded rod to have the nuts thread on properly. I'm going to give you a serious warning, and I cannot stress this enough. If you are going to be using your belt sander, which is just perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Heck, you can sharpen knives and chisels on a belt sander. But there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, do not, and I cannot stress this enough, please, do not use your dust collection system when doing this with your threaded rod. You are grinding metal. Those metal shavings or filings, I should say, get hot. The last thing you want to do is to suck hot filings into your dust collection system and have that dust ignite. So please guys, if you're going to use your belt sander, uh, do not use your dust collection when you're doing the threaded rods. A better solution if it suits you would be to use a grinding wheel. So if you have a grinding wheel, by all means use it, just be careful. Um, but the belt sander works just fine as well. No matter how you look at this project, guys, if you're doing any kind of handwork or fret work, whether you use the fret saw table that I showed you how to make before, or whether you use the fret saw or coping saw vise that we made here today, they're both fantastic tools to assist you to hold your stock, to get quality cuts so that you can concentrate on the squareness of your blade, to following your lines, and to getting that really nice fretwork cut by hand. But either way, it's a valuable jig for your shop, and it's definitely one worth looking into. 
Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank the viewer who gave me that suggestion. Uh, it was a great one. He wanted to know if it was possible, and here we are today, and sure enough, it is possible, and we made one. So guys, if there's a suggestion that you have for the show, or something that you'd like to see made here on the program, just speak up. Drop me a comment below. You can send me an email. Kenny E at a cut above woodworkings.com. Feel free to drop me a line, drop me a picture of some of your work. Heck, just drop me a, a little note to say hello, whatever you like. But if you want to see something on the show, send me a message and let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell, and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you're going to give this one a try for your own fretwork in your shop. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.